Magnificent Makeover Week, live on the Wendy Williams Show. The kids have come to play today. You won't believe what I'm about to tell you. But honey, let me show you what he looks like now. My girls are always turned out. It's Glam Bam. Thank you, ma'am. Magnificent Makeover Week, and um, today I am doing disco. Yeah. It's like Halloween, only it's not Halloween. The problem is the shoes are higher than I'm usually wearing, and I almost caught it right here on live TV. Now I'm already in the fall of shame. So Marco, thank you very much. That's Marco Gloria. Yeah. <laughs> Marco, Marco does my audience in between the commercials and stuff. Anyway, we also have makeovers for three lucky Wendy watchers. <laughs> in Desperate Need Wendy Style. <laughs> Plus, our friend celebrity hairstylist Johnny Wright is here. He's actually upstairs right now giving them a brand new look. Yeah! You know, the weird thing is, is that I walk out here just fine. As soon as those, right back there, Suzanne, and I hear live from New York, it's Wendy. I start to shake like a leaf <laughs> if I'm wearing shoes that are a little bit uncomfortable. And I get excited about being out here, which thank goodness, because there's so many people who have TV shows who are not excited anymore about it. But my heart starts to race. I <laughs> Just being real. But my heart starts to race. I almost want to throw up and then the doors open. Eight seasons almost, and the same feeling happens every day. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> thank you. Listen, so I have a bone to pick with you. No pun intended. My dog Shaquille just turned one. And you know, well, first of all, He's looking in the kitchen because I'm cooking dinner and I don't know about you, but if you've got a big dog, they do the most as soon as they smell the garlic. Hit the pan. So he's outside playing. No, it's not raining. The ground is wet. That is slobber on the window because he really wants to come in. All the dog people were like, why don't you just let him in? You see it's raining outside. Because he's a dog and animals are used to getting rained on also. <laughs> It wasn't raining actively there. There's an umbrella right here and a perfectly comfortable chair that I've set up for him. He could be over there chilling, but no. And then thirdly or fourthly, you all said, well, you wouldn't put your son outside. Well, excuse me, crazy animal people. Humans and animals are totally separate. I, I don't, don't consider my son an animal. No, he would not be outside. But this is the dog. It, you know, on Facebook, and people had a fit. Well, Prince's fans are uh, still furious because Madonna is scheduled to play uh, or do a Prince tribute at the Billboard Awards this Sunday. Now, the thing is, is that they say it's a tribute. Doesn't mean she's going to perform. I have no, she, for all we know, she could come out there and read Prince sheet music. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, I don't know what she's going to do. My assumption is that she's gonna perform and there's a petition online and already over 6,000 people have signed it saying that she's not worthy. Oh, oh really, Prince people? Well, who do you think is worthy? I mean, there are three people in the trinity of greatness in music, um, as far as pop stars, that are age appropriate, and two of them are dead. Michael, Prince, and Madonna. That's it. Uh, and, you know, we say a lot about Madonna here on the show, and we will continue to. <laughs> But you know, I'm an equal opportunity chat bout, and what I'm chatting about right now is I think that Madonna is perfect for this. Who do you want, Miguel? <laughs> Look, I love Miguel too, but Miguel is, he, he might have looked like Prince, but he's not the legend that Prince was. Um, who do you want, Elton John? No. Aretha Franklin? No. Oh, let me guess, Lady Gaga? No. Uh, Janelle Monae? No. Madonna? all the people that I mentioned, but let's, let's be fair and talk about a tribute. I mean, Prince and Madonna have a long history. She, he appeared twice on her Like a Prayer album. They dated in 1985. Okay, well, he was, he was really weird to her. She said, um, you know, they had gone out for dinner and all he did was sit there and sip tea daintily. She said daintily, I guess that be. And she said it freaks her out when people don't eat, plus sip tea daintily. <laughs> anyway, so then they, then they fought for years after the dating, but they had recently made up. Madonna was in, um, um, out in Minneapolis doing a show and Prince invited 30 of her roadies along with her over to the house and Madonna and Prince disappeared in the backyard for a long period of time <laughs> while the entourage was inside partying and apparently that was the point where they made up. So again, petitioners, please have several seats. <laughs> you know, the only thing, the only thing that, uh, the only thing that I wish the Madonna wouldn't do, and she probably won't, is take it as far as Lady Gaga did when she did the David Bowie tribute at the Grammys. Because what Gaga did was, and people were kind of upset about that, like this is the Ziggy Stardust David Bowie. And, and she tried to get the look and the whole affectation, whereas Madonna, you just go out there with your booty out. Oh, you and he, <laughs> you and he do have that in common, Prince. You go out there with your booty out and your fishnets and don't forget your ax. That's what they call a guitar. That's what all the cool people call it, okay? <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll be watching on Sunday. I'm sure she'll tear it down. So, <laughs> the time has finally come. We've got a first look at Mariah Carey's docu-series. <laughs> it's our hot clip of the day, roll it! She's been going nonstop. My life would be much easier if all I did was come in and sing the songs and leave. Do you understand how scared I am right now? The thing is about Mariah, she's very misunderstood. I'm like anybody else. Please, it's the most important event that's ever happened. Right, can we see the ring? Can we see it? I'm wearing these glasses because we're in fluorescent lighting, and I have a rule which states that I will not be seen in fluorescent lighting without sunglasses. I know it's very 90s. My fans are unparalleled. Nobody gets it. I don't think everyone knows anything about me. You know, this is what I say. This is going to be really interesting because in my, first of all, nobody should stand under fluorescent lights. <laughs> so she's got something there. I mean, I don't know about you and how you are with lighting at your house, but I think I've shared with you, there's a dimmer, dimmer on every, uh, we don't have fluorescent lights, but you should always be in control of your lighting. You know, <laughs> dimmers work really well. <laughs> Second of all, um, like when she was on MTV with Cribs, she pretty much showed us 
who she was. Do you remember seeing that? And in my mind, I believe that this is exactly who she is, like the crazy lady with the glasses. And, the, and I think that she'll give us what we need on this docu-series. It's only eight, um, eight episodes. And as long as, they kill, as long as they keep her ginger ale bottle filled with extra splashes, darling. <laughs> should be good. Uh, by the way, this, this whole ensemble is horrible. But then again, who am I to talk sometimes? Uh, but it's horrible, but you have to understand, this is 10 o'clock yesterday morning um, where she was doing press for the, uh, for the show. Uh, I think that she was, she's good. Listen, here's how I feel about reality shows and a lot of shows. It's so surprising to me. Like, I'll give everything one or two episodes and then all of a sudden I'll lose interest. So I'm gonna give her one or two episodes. It's going to be on E and it's got to be better than more Keeping Up With The Kardashian or <laughs> Sorry, Rich Kids of Beverly Hills or whoever, Hollywood. Uh, uh, no bueno. Um, <laughs> what else comes on E? I like the E! News, but we get that all week. So when they do, do the E! News, by the time you see it, you've already seen everything that you need. Um, anyway, so I have no idea when this is going to air, but some point this year on E! Yeah. <laughs> on another note. <laughs> on another note. Uh, she lost her balance yesterday while she was approaching, uh-huh. But she recovered. My thing is, where are the people, like she's got her sunglasses and a weak handshake from whoever this is who needs to be fired. Like, when you're about to lose your balance, you need a shoulder. That's why I called Mark, like you need a shoulder. <laughs> oh gosh. So there are lots of celebrities uh, doing uh, breakups and hookups. It's time for our romance report. Hit it. I really wanted to give it to you when I came out here. I wanted to do this and all that. And, and all I could feel was, oh my God. <laughs> Hillary Duff and her ex-husband, um, Mike, have finalized their divorce. That was back in February. They do have a really cute four-year-old son, and um, that's their only child, and they were just spotted looking really friendly. Uh-huh, but that's not the only one. Look at that one. Yeah. Like, if, if his hands were to his side, that would just be a little peck and goodbye, but his hand is up like he's still dominating, and her eyes are closed, and her head is tilted. They're still doing it. Yeah. I think that they are still very much romantically involved. You remember, Mike, um, Mike was a hockey player, but he hurt his hip. So when he hurt his hip, you know, sometimes when a man is down on the couch while the woman works all day, they get all prideful, and I guess the fights in the house were crazy. So she was probably one day like, take her wig, throw it down, I want a divorce, I can't even deal with you anymore. I've been working all day, and you're still laying on the couch with your hip up? So, um, by the way, his family um, used to own the IKEA of Canada, but they sold it back in 2012 for like $77 million. $700 million. So I would have been like, yeah, I'm man down on my hip, <laughs> laying on a pillow of money, honey. No, but here's the thing. I believe, I believe that if you have children, oh, my wig. <laughs> Um, I believe that if you have children, um, there's nothing wrong with drive-bys and a lot of flirting and getting together when the kids are old enough to understand. Like at four years old, this little boy is so happy that he sees daddy sometimes tuck him in at home and every once in a while in the morning when he wakes up, sees daddy leave. <laughs> and mommy has a, a smile on her face, but it does become tricky because it blocks you from having the next relationship. See, if I were Hillary, I'd still get along with Mike for the time being, but I would also date a lot of other guys. And then as soon as I found out exactly what I want to do or who I want to be with, or maybe I just want to be with myself, then I'd have a more um, open discussion with Mike about, okay, we can't be doing this anymore, you know? Um, and I, Mike, if I were you too, I would date, because you all are divorced. Anyway, so that's the hookup. Yeah. Now, on to the breakup. Now, I'm not a real action hero person. I like Wonder Woman um, on my cups 
and in my collection, but not really to go to the movies and, you know, like that. So, but this guy right here, his name is Henry Cavill. And Henry is 33 years old, and he plays Superman. And he just... <laughs> anyway, he's 33. And uh, he just split from his girlfriend, a girl by the name of Tara, who happens to be 19 years old. All of a sudden, you're not hot for Superman, right? Because you realize, like, Henry's got a problem, and his problem is he probably likes girls with one-word answers and vocal fry. <laughs> All right, she reportedly is devastated about this breakup because now she has to go back to being a regular college student. She also thought that he was the love of her life. Well, that's easy, that happens when you're 19 and when you're dating a 33-year-old man who's an accomplished superhero. <laughs> But don't you worry, Tara, because now that you've dated a Superman, you are already in the right circles to be, you just date another. Won't be a superhero, but certainly you can date somebody like Idris Elba. You know, the thing is, what I'm trying to say, Tara, is, um, Tara, he has upped your game. Like, you win, you win. Don't, uh, don't waste your time dating any of those slob college boys. Don't date, like, be like Karuchi Tran, you know, like Chris Brown upgraded her and actually bounces from like football players and all that other kind of stuff. So Tara, you take care, honey. You will be fine. Henry, on the other hand, I don't know if he'll ever be able to get a woman. I'm talking about a woman's woman. I know, I know. Because as soon as... I know, he looks much better there. But remember, at 33, he, did, he dated a 19-year-old. See, to me, that makes him undateable for a real woman. Because no matter what he does and how much money he has, you're always looking at him like, really, that's your intellect? A 19-year-old? And even smart 19-year-olds still don't compare to, you know, a 27-year-old who's smart or something. So he's damaged goods, but she'll be fine. <laughs> I don't mind subtle jabs at people that you don't like. <laughs> you know, like when you saw Kelly Ripa walk out with the freedom jacket. That was subtle. She didn't say anything. All it said was freedom. That was grown woman subtle though. See, Joe Jonas says that he gets compared to um, his ex Gigi Hadid's new, I know you're like, Wendy, where are you going with this story? <laughs> you went from Ripa to this, okay. Joe Jonas says that he's getting compared to um, his ex Gigi Hadid's current boyfriend, Zayn Malik. Well, they're both swirly looking and they're really cute, um, but Gigi responded with one of those jabs. Not so subtle, because she's young. You know, she doesn't know. It's our hot shot of the day, hit it. See, the way Ripa did it, it just said freedom. The way she's doing it, it's, that's not so subtle. That's not even cool. I don't even know why you're paying him any mind, Gigi. Joe, you'll be just fine. Just don't talk about Gigi and Zane and move on with your hot life. Gigi's t-shirt, in case you don't see, says, LOL, you're not Zane Malik. <laughs> I think I hear maracas. I am not sure. Do I hear maracas? Come on out, Suzanne. It's time for Wendy's vacation giveaway. You know doggone well you don't really eat like that. It's Suzanne is the cleanest eater I know. It's Taco Tuesday! Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's get today's contestant on the line. Is that organic? You want one? No, no, you haven't washed your hands. Hello? Um, um, hello, uh, Tanya in Tennessee, is this you? Yes, oh my God, yes! Hi, Hi Tanya. Hi. You're today's contestant on Wendy's Vacation Giveaway. Oh my God, we are. All right, Tanya, stop buttering us up because we're gonna find out what you're playing for and then you've gotta guess correctly, okay? Okay. All right, Suzanne. 
Oh, sorry. Sp spend an umbrella. <laughs> Playing for a five-day, oh four-night vacation at the all-inclusive Sun Palace in Cancun, Mexico. We'll fly you and a guest to this luxurious property by Palace Resorts, perfect for those seeking a beautiful upscale vacation. All right, Tanya, you gotta listen closely because you're gonna have 15 seconds to answer correctly, okay? Okay, Wendy. And your first answer is your only answer, and this one's going to be very difficult. Okay. All right, Tanya. Yesterday on Hot Topics, we talked about Jermaine Jackson. What New York City landmark did I say his hairline looks like? 15 seconds and go! Lincoln Tunnel! Yes! <laughs> Tanya, enjoy yourself in Cancun. Thank you for watching our show. Bye-bye. Make sure that you watch our show every day because we might be calling you next.